Folks, it wasn't the prettiest of days yesterday in Foxborough, but the woman, the wonderful woman to my right or left, I don't know how you're going to see us on YouTube or if you're listening. She was in the building for it. On a specific side that has later to be named. Yes, but I will say this still to her, her dad and her boyfriend, who basically I wanted to rip every piece of apparel off of him, uh, (laughs) was at the game yesterday. But before we get into anything being said, we're going to jump right into it head first, right in the deep end. There's no shallow end in this episode. What did you think of number 10? Oh, I thought we were going O-line. Um, Ooh, we can do we can sure. that too. We can do Ben Brown as well. Ben Brown fan. Ben Brown stand show. <laughs> I, I I am a Ben Brown stan after that game. But um, no, with Drake May, I think it is beyond encouraging. That is the number one word that comes to mind after that start. Um, you have to think about who was around him. But I love to see his connection with Kayshawn Booty and with Demario Douglas. That, to me on top of everything was just the highlight because those are two young guys pop. We've always like, he's the hype has been around him since the start. Um, since he came on the team, you know, he's had that, like, this is pop. He's good. There we go. But that being said, Kayshawn was someone who bill never really gave a shot last year. He was that healthy scratch for the whole year, basically. And so it was really encouraging to see like, okay, this is why the Patriots drafted. This is why he was picked up. Um, so that to me was a highlight, the touchdown to Hunter Henry, you got to get Hunter Henry involved. That's always, that's always a plus. Yeah. Um, the way he got out of the pocket and was mobile. Listen, he made mistakes. There was like one throw he made that was so behind. I think it was pop on the run. He is a rookie. Remember Caleb Williams first game. Everyone was trashing him after that first game. Yeah. Don't forget that Caleb's now had, you know, five, six weeks in the league to get used to this. Drake has had a week to get ready. And this was his first official start. So um, for that, I think fans should have a lot of hope. Yeah. I'm the same way. Like, look, I feel like Kayshawn kind of got the weird bill treatment because of what happened in that first game against Philadelphia last year, obviously feet on inbounds at fourth down. That's a play of rookies. Just it's, it's what a rookie's going to do. Um, mm-hmm. All in all yesterday, look, the first interception, I said this on last night, me and my buddy did a Danny, we have a Danny Dimes thing going we, whenever he's on primetime, we record, so we're recording there, but I still plug the show. But I basically was saying how the first interception, look, rookies are going to make mistakes like that. Yeah. It's understandable. The second one was just, I, I don't know how to explain that. I, I, it just, dumb bewilderment, if you will. Yeah, that's that was my thing. I agreed with the, with the second interception. It's like, when you're going up against Will Anderson on defense, that guy's top five in the league. Like, he's in... There's no stopping that man. Watching him play was, you know, very fun because he's just so good. And he tips the ball and the safety literally had to reach around to grab that ball. Like that's a freak play that honestly, it's not one of those things where you can sit here and blame the Patriots. I feel like a little bit on that one, maybe the O-line for not blocking Will Anderson better, but like, that's just a freak play where, you know what you give credit to credit. You give credit where credit's due, and there was credit due to the Texans' defense just for making kind of like that miraculous play. Yeah. Uh, so I'm with you there. The first interception, agreed. It was going to happen. Um, I will say my dad did think there were going to be two interceptions on the day, and he was right. Um, but he was – he was, but just – he was very happy overall. I don't want to – I'm not going to paint the, him in this negative light. He was very happy with Drake's performance as well. So Mr. Weller's happy, and that's all that we can <laughs> yeah. take away from today. We can um, end the show now. Okay. Yes. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Um, <laughs> but in all seriousness, there was one stat on Twitter pointed out to me from your well, like his colleague and friend of the show, Andrew Callahan, yes. um, that uh, finishing charting Drake May's debut, I had him under pressure on 40.4% of his dropbacks versus a blitz rate of 28.2%, penalties excluded, which we will get into. Um, versus the blitz, he was 6 of 12 for 113 yards, two touchdowns, an interception, and 11 rushing yards. Need is wild when he was under pressure. Uh, seven of eleven for ninety yards, four sacks, and twelve rush yards. Amazing. Seven of like eleven that. is really nice to hear against pressure, considering the state. I mean, now you don't know how long Vidarian's low is going to be out. He was getting an MRI today. There's no update. We probably won't hear an update on that till Wednesday from Mayo. Um, so that means Zach Thomas is probably slotting back in for low. And Thomas did struggle. You have um, Demontre Jacobs, who I feel like had a better first game than second game. Um, a one who has to be better. That is actually, I think my biggest thing on the O-line is that he's this like staple of the O-line. This is a guy who just got paid big bucks um, because of his versatility. And I feel like 
he hasn't really shown that, like what we saw last year, you know, yeah. even though there were the quarter, I mean, <laughs> sometimes I wonder, like you put Drake May behind the O-line last year. I think, you know, with Trent on the left and Mike on the right, it was even a little, it, you know, Drake probably could have been, some of those games would have been a lot, you know, could have been more wins for the Patriots. So um, I think that's the biggest thing. And actually May, uh, Gerard May, Mayo actually admitted this was really the first time he has acknowledged the O-line has been a factor in when to play Drake May. And yes, this was like a known fact, but it hasn't been said for so long. Um, he wasn't willing to admit it. He said, there's a lot of factors. There's a lot of factors. And he actually straight up said today, the O-line is a factor. So it was nice to kind of hear that um, just because it's true. And it's something we all knew. And honestly, I, I almost feel like it helps him a little bit to make that fact. It's like, You've admitted what you needed to admit. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that's the, that's the exact thing. Sometimes you got to let the cat out of the bag. Um, the only con I have yesterday, and I'm start, I, I'm not trying to be on the whole. You get rid of someone after one season, but even like like my wife, she loves football, but she's not like you know to the crazy extent I am. Even her understanding with me that look, Alex Van Pelt's play calling has to be way less conservative. This team wants to show signs of success oh, and yes. progression. Because look, we already know the seasons. I don't want to say it's over. It's 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 cooked by McGarvin's definition, not by Twitter's definition. But mm -hmm. this season is one for learning and one where wins are not going to be – they're going to be hard to come by. Look, week one was a blast. Week two and three, it's kind of like you hang your head and go, and it is what it is. And then week four – like week week four was expected. Week five, I was like oh, – was, that was that was my straw. More than offensive line play was the Hunter Henry throw uh, towards the end of the game where I'm like, you got to learn to get that throw out of bounds. Mm -hmm. But I have oh, another that. Yeah, I also have another stat for you because there's a lot of people on here who like stats like DVOA, EPA per play. But by defensive EPOA, the DVOA, the next eight defenses the Patriots are playing are ranked 32nd, 12th, 9th, 7th, 31st, 25th, 21st, and 26th. Houston is third by that metric in the league. Yeah. So they're going from third to 32nd, who in a team in Jacksonville – who just traded one of their defensive, I believe, alignment today. I also where, want to point out that sucks for that guy. Three touchdowns against the number three defense. Talk about promising. He threw three touchdown passes in his debut against a team. And, you know, they're all going to say, we didn't win. We didn't win. This is not a season about winning. This is a season nope. about hope, I think. And for five weeks, there was no hope. Um, and that's not to knock Jacoby. I actually have been a pro Jacoby guy for a while. Cause I think that he came in and did what he needed to do. I think the switch came at the right time. I will admit that, but yeah. I give a lot of credit to Jacoby because this was a really, and excuse my language. I'm going to pull him a garbage here, a really shitty situation that Jacoby was thrown into because he was brought it. He knew he was coming in. They were going to use a number three on a the quarterback. They could say they were going to trade it all they want. They were never going to, they would, none of them would still have jobs. if They had traded that number three pick. No, 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 no. It's one of those things where you look at it and like, oh, honey, no. Like the reports of like, it would have had to take Kingdom Ka to basically make the trade happen or what Carolina gave up two years ago to go get Bryce Young. Um, yeah. But when I you think Kamala Harris would have had to step out of the race and they would have had to put like, you know, Drake May in or something like that to run for president actually to make that <laughs> more worthy. Exactly. That but didn't even make sense, but it's like that something that crazy is like, I think what the trade would have had to be. <laughs> But no, but you're right though, because when you look at it, it's not. If you think about some of these teams right now, would you want to be in a position where the Vegas, Las Vegas Raiders are in, where you have like a Jacoby Brissett equal and a quarter and a, and a fourth round pick? I saw some people online yesterday saying, "Oh, you know the Bailey Zappi thing," or even uh, Boston Globe, someone from the Boston Globe going, "You know, oh, you, this is why you keep Bailey Zappi." And it's like, look, you can't basically give me any logic for why keeping that is good because Vegas has no plan. You have their top player shoving coaches on the sideline. You have Cleveland situation where you have a quarterback making too much money, the same record as the Patriots. The Jacksonville Jaguars, our opponent this coming week, it's the same thing. They just paid their quarterback a ton of money. So with New England, it's one of those things now where you can look at it where – paid him a ton of money and everyone's talking about Mac Jones starting. That's how bad it is right now. If that happens and he wins, I there's a, there's a very bad part of me that will not want to come on here and record. If that were to happen Sunday. No, I'm busy that week. Oh, yeah. It's one busy that night. Yeah, it's it's just like me myself, me 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 and myself. But no, I want to no, go back to You would never pay that a quarterback yes. that's the money and bench him. So I don't think there's anything to worry about there. <laughs> yeah. 
And throughout and throughout friendships, though, there was one thing I messaged you during the game yesterday, and I'm not afraid. I'm going to call you out on it right now, and I'm going to show the world it right now. But there's one image that came to mind when Pop Douglas entered <laughs> the end zone. Bam. That girl smiling yeah. who's not wearing glasses. That was right me. Anymore. I won't lie. That was definitely me. I was – Pop is such a good guy. That is a genuine – football guy all he loves to do is be out there he talks about it being a blessing that's all he'll ever say when he talks about it exactly. and he was a patriots top receiver last year but with all the offensive issues he could not get into the end zone yeah. and to see him finally do that to get his first nfl touchdown he was literally like cradling the ball in the locker room after i th i was uh, andrew callahan who posted the photo he told all of us reporters that he was literally going to sleep with the ball that night I was expecting, I like joked with him. I was like, you need to like take a selfie and post that on your Instagram story in the middle of the night. Just like me and my bestie or something like that. It's like, look, look, but, look, look, look. Yeah, he was like, wait, he was wait, so wait. happy. And like, you know, of course not like happy as in like, you know, the team lost, not going to be happy. But that was a hurdle he needed to get over. I feel like that was almost like also a mental block in some yeah. ways. Um, Just to be like, wow, everyone's kind of calling me one of the best receivers in the Patriots. And yet I haven't gotten into the end zone. About freaking time. <laughs> that is what I will say. I was so happy for Pop when that happened. Um, Well-deserved. Is it weird if I ask you, what were your biggest takeaways about the Houston Texans yesterday? No, that's fine. Uh, getting the first ever win at Gillette Stadium, by the way. Yeah. CJ Stroud is very good at football. Um, I, Tank Dell is very annoying me and good at football. Yeah. He, he this The connection between CJ and Tank Dell is like what I just like hope next year that will be pop and drake you know what i mean like yeah. that was watching that is like i'm like ready for that um no they were insane jo having joe mixon back was insane for that offense i mean he ran all over the patriots because i don't think they faced someone who just can do that um stefan diggs as annoying as it might be unfortunately was not christian gonzalez's best game he was uh he's been much more successful containing some of the other top receivers in the league but he was not having much success with diggs Yep. And I think the issue with that, too, is that um, in those moments, maybe it doesn't look as successful because, you know, you have Tank Dell and Stefan Diggs. I mean, that's hard when you have your top your top cornerback is supposed to match up against the best receiver on that team. There were two there. And I think they chose Diggs probably because, I mean, I don't know this. This would be my guess is that um, he has a little more experience against Diggs in the league. I think that was actually kind of the smarter move there. It would have been fun to see him up against Tank Dell, but I like the call there, especially because you know how Diggs can get. I mean, we saw it with the taunting penalty. Diggs will talk, talk the talk, and then, you know. So, um, no, I think it just was not Christian Gonzalez's best game, but I think that they have such a good opportunity this week that they cannot blow it. Like, this is a this is a week that I'm looking at, and they, they're underdogs right now, I believe, in the betting world. I will check that. Double check. I believe I saw that they were six, either six point underdogs or they had, yeah, I believe that was it. But um, this is a win for them this week. Before they, they even, are, play, this is they a are win. minus two and a half. They are plus two and a half on the betting on the betting line this week. Okay, so they are under. Yeah, they are the underdog this week. Green oh, Bay is the favorite. Not. Yes. Key news report. I was right. <laughs> better, better, better than I am. Um, well, my thing. My thing with the – yeah, no, my betting's my betting has been terrible this year. Um, my thing with the Houston Texans is I've been looking back at their track record. They look good, but I, I still need to see them get that signature win. Yes. You know, like if I look at some of their wins, like they beat Chicago before Chicago's become good, which I still say this first. What Chicago did yesterday, that's a game they had to have because they don't want to be playing when they – because after they play us, their schedule is the NFC North, San Francisco, and Seattle. Yeah. You don't want those games being must win. You want those games where if you drop it, it's not the end of the world. So that's why that was a must win for them yesterday. Uh, they beat Tennessee, which, okay, you beat the Rams and Panthers. Or no, that's the Bears, excuse me. That's a Bears schedule. So back, we're going to back it up. We're going to back it up. They've beaten the Colts. They beat the Bears. They beat the Patriots. They beat the, the, the Bills. But the Bills, I don't know what to think of the Bills right now. It's weird. In about uh, 20 minutes, we're going to have a get-right game for two teams, which I don't know which team's going to get right more. But here's the thing, too. I'd rather be in this, like I say, for the long-term future situation, I still think New England's best suited for the next five to ten years. And I only say that because, look, Buffalo's in a window right now. Yeah. New York's in a window right now. We don't know what the hell's going on. And Miami, well, it's just very unfortunate the situation that they're in right now. Um, 
since you and I haven't spoke since, uh, and also too, I uh, because I always try to get this in. How about a great pop uh, metaphor for pop, where he, next season he can just be in the end zone, saying the whole time, saying it's me, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. Um, so you know, I always I do it. I it, you know what you got to take care of you got, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I every time you're on, no matter if it's you or I, if it's you, I McGarvin, I gotta take I gotta take care of my girl. Um, since it's since the last time we spoke, it was right after cuts. The first five games of the year, like I don't even know if I want to go back and look on it, but like, <laughs> is there like besides Drake starting from the first six games, like what has been another positive limelight to you that's not named or that doesn't have long orange hair? What's a, a limelight you look at where you're like the Patriots are set at this particular position, or even yeah, someone who's impressed you? Who's impressed me? A bit, we we can do both. We can do both. Yeah, Marte Mapu. And I know this is one game I'm or two games I'm talking about because he only came back because he uh, started the season. He had to miss the first four. But these last two games for me with Marte Mapu to like were really fun to see. I think he really stepped in um, in that other game when you had Duggar and Jabril Peppers out. Um, and then this game, yes, you get Duggar back, but Marte is still out there. And then he made that in, I mean, that Marcus Jones um, interception in the end zone. That was Mar that was Marte. I watched that back and like people are like, oh, I don't know. It was like he could have jumped early. What? No, I think that was like in my opinion, that was a great defensive play. He he caused that ball to just bobble and let Marcus and I give Marcus credit too. It's not it's nothing like that because he was there to catch it. But no, that was a play made by Marte Mapu. The defensive pass interference, that first one should not have been a call. Um, considering that they missed a very blatant uh, face mask. Uh, penalty later on in the game and you're going to call, you know, you're, you, they pick, they pick and choose what call they wanted to make that game, which was a little frustrating, but yeah, I mean, that I think is the top on my top of my list right now is Marte Mapu. One player for me who I want to say impressed by, I know, look, this certain position has been a little scrutinized throughout the first two weeks of the season to be different than you. I'm going to go Antonio Gibson. Hmm. He hasn't been he hasn't been stellar, but he's had some plays where it's like, okay, we see you. Like we're seeing what we saw the first couple of years yeah. in Washington. You know, he's coming in, he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Um, I, I just look at it too, especially throughout I the Ramondre, the Ramondre basically benching was like the SpongeBob meme where it's like, in you go, okay, out you go. Basically, just the, so I mean, literally he had his best game. I mean, it was the best thing to kind of get his mindset in like the your bench, because he had his best game besides that week one, but like no, that was very funny. Yeah. Um, but no, I just, I've liked what I've seen from Antonio Gibson. I'll also say this too. I know he had the goofy missed kick uh, last week, but it feels so great to have a reliable field goal kicker more than a reliable quarterback. Yeah, I will say um, Joey Sly has been great. You know, special teams this year get, just deserves a shout out. Um, Jeremy Springer does. Yeah. I, well, and I, I think Jeremy Springer is doing a great job with that, um, with that unit. Cause there's a lot of rookies on that unit. You know, I think about um, Marcellus dial. I remember speaking to him over the summer and he's in a very tough cornerback. Someone room. I liked someone yeah. I liked. He's in a very competitive cornerback room. So it was like, okay, how am I going to make the team? Oh, let me just go on special teams. Like I'll be gunner. And he did that Dell same thing. So a lot of these guys that were maybe on like a roster bubble spot were able to make their impact on special teams and they're now out there doing their thing. So a lot of credit, of course, there's Brendan Schooler. I mean, that guy is so fun to watch play football. He's so aggressive. I there was one player I remember focusing on this last game. He was double teamed and he still managed to break through both of them. He, he wasn't, uh, they ended up fair catching it. So it wasn't, you know, anything big that happened, but literally he's like shoving, he's like, you know, almost stiff arming these two guys trying to get him off of him. Cause they were hugging him. It felt like. On the double team. And just got a much deserved contract extension as I believe cars Sorry. are running outside your apartment. Um Sorry, I'm Boston man. <laughs> ah, she's a, she's a Boston girly now. So what we what so what can we say? Um, but no, there's there's been like I know like it's right now, it's like, oh, it's a one in five team, how you can focus on positives. Because these are positives that you can take and build upon. Because I was I was saying this to like I was saying this, I was saying this to my wife last night. Next year, this is a team where look, they have the quarterback figured out. Yeah, check. They're going to have a top five pick probably check, which guess what you can trade out of. If there's a quarterback that a team really wants. Yeah. So for all the talk of this year of old, they should have traded back. Well, I don't think the quarterback class is as competitive as it was this year. 
it's is not, it? but stupid teams do stupid. No, it's not even stupid. Dysfunctional it's gonna be the teams, <laughs> dysfunctional, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be the Giants. But dysfunctional teams do dysfunctional things, and that's just where a team like the New York Giants can come into play with this. It's a team yeah. where like the Tennessee Titans can come into play with this. Mm-hmm. You know, there's all these teams where it's like, hey, they see someone they like. The Patriots realize, hey, we can move back because guess what? I know a lot of people like Will Banks, like my. Well, I'm getting the players mixed up. Will Campbell and Kelvin Banks, both out of LSU and Texas, respectively. But I've been starting to hear rumblings from scouts that there's a lot of good offensive linemen in this class. This is more of a nitty gritty draft class, like what we saw three years ago, which unfortunately, probably one of the best players from that draft class suffered a very bad injury yesterday. But what I got to praise Houston for a second for one of the players I did like yesterday on the field for them was Derek Stingley Jr. Yeah. I thought he had a good game, but there's signs there to see. And it's like, I'm going to take a quote from our friend because look, it's like, you got to remember like when your friends aren't here, you got to remember them the best. But I remember McGarvin saying wins aren't going to be a lot of them, but the vibes are going to be fun. And I feel like now too, especially with KB being back, I don't know what it's like with the Gerard stuff, but you get that sense of this team is kind of bonding together, even throughout everything that's gone on. Look from the torn pack with uh, Bentley to, Peppers, which look, we don't know what's going on there. Right as of now, we just know commissioner's exemplus probably will be suspended at some point. We're gonna let the judicial system carry it out as is. It just it's very, very unfortunate what happened. We don't condone it here. But it's just been this next man up mentality where unless you're an offensive lineman, to where like a guy like Daniel Aquali is having a great year. Uh, a guy I know McGarvin's a fan of, uh Jacques, I'm gonna get this name wrong. Jacques Jacqueline Roy. Roy, yeah. Two sacks in his first two games with the team. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah, but like even still, like, and also I did see Christian uh, Barmore actually post about it an hour ago on his Instagram story. He posted a photo of him playing with some music. So I, I keep saying this. I don't, I want the human to get healthy first before the football player is back yeah. on the field. So I'm getting his back in like before the end of the season. I mean, he's in the, he's someone, he's in the facility every day. I, I, when we have the open locker room time uh, to mm-hmm. speak with players, he's in the locker room every day. Mm. same with Cole Strange and, like these are guys that are working to get back on the field as quickly as they can and I think that says everything you need to know and then I want to ask David Andrews is it out for the season or is it still just being wait so it is done. Okay. Be out for the season um because he needed the surgery um so Juwan ben, surgery the one that people are kind of like he was the one who was like oh I wouldn't I don't know if I'd say this is like season ending or not but um it does you know, all signs will point to similar to like last year where it was like, oh, Judon kind of could return maybe. But like when you're a three, four win team, are you really going to have your, are you going to risk in re-injuring this guy? So um, yeah, those two guys are out. Cole, um, I'm I'm curious if Cole's uh, return could be sooner rather than later. Um, that's a speculation because of the Nick Leverett move today. Um, I could see after possible. this game or before, either after Jacksonville or before Tennessee. Yeah. So I do think his return could be a little sooner than um, expected. And yeah, no, I, getting Barmore back would be a game changer for that team. I mean, hit, imagine him and Keon White on defense together. Like that is a matchup that I cannot wait to like, like no team's going to want to go against them in the best possible way. So I know from experience, I know obviously mine's CFL, yours is NFL, but with, press boxes you're told not to cheer you're told to keep your thoughts and opinions to yourself it was all very visible on the play calling on the officiating yesterday and look i'm someone who gets pissed off at officiating quite often but yesterday just seemed to be another level of problems within the nfl system of officiating was i bothered by what happened jalen polk against miami yes but then you realize look the nfl is a league with just dumb stupid rules when it happens yeah. That was a genuine, like, it sucks. That is a legit rule. Like, they made the correct yeah. call based on the rule book. You can't blame the officials on that one. I don't want to believe it, but it's just what it is. Um, right, I'm with you. But with yesterday, look, there was a lot of flack with Ronald Torbert. McGarvin and I even had an interaction with it because there was a play call against the Raiders two years ago where, guess what, it was Ronald Torbert's crew again. Mm-hmm. Was there anything else to come out from people in the press boxes, opinions, or even just an in general – a vibe around the fan base of what exactly was going on. Because like for me online, it was a lot of people were frustrated with it. Um, And it was just the fact too, that even when you have Gene Steratore, who is a very prominent referee figure, who's now works for a television network, 
basically saying, I don't agree with the calls, you know you have a problem. And then I said this yesterday too. It just put a wet blanket on Drake May's debut. The fact that officiating was so blatantly going one way. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's definitely hard and it's it takes away from the game, um, which makes things 10 times worse. With the, um, the Jalen Polk one, as I just said, you know, it's it sucks, but it happened. Uh, in terms of this week, the missed call on Antonio Gibson cannot happen. If you are an NFL ref, there is no way that is allowed to happen because his head snapped back. I mean, there were people who, even before the replay was shown, saw that happening from where we were sitting. My dad, again, my dad, I'm going to bring it up. This is a guy who loves, yes, he loves football, but he doesn't know like the ins and outs, you know? He's like, he's just a guy who loves the game. He saw it from his seat. Like, if, if everyone else is seeing it, come on. That was clear as day. And then, unfortunately, the next play was the strip sack that resulted, you know. So it's that's what was so frustrating about it is because that could have been a whole other outcome in that exact moment had that call been made. So just, you know, there's no cheering or anything when things like that are done. But those are just moments when it's real. Like, you know, it, it's hard. It's hard to watch because it's like, okay, that really, you can't have that, but then call the DPI. That really wasn't a DPI in the, you know, first moment, first quarter of the game. First drive of the game too. Um, My big takeaway from it is, so obviously with the television broadcast and also I want to ask out of curiosity, what section were they in yesterday? Just to know from where for peripheral. So they were, my my dad and uh, Sam were sitting in 204, which is basically um, there to the, if you're facing the big new scoreboard, the lighthouse, they were just a little to the right of it. Okay, so like I know where they were because when – I and I still reference this and I still make the point of I might have to go to the game against Indianapolis because they have not won a game wearing the red uniform since I was in the building. But I know from the two I, – so I was up at least 224, which is like the section right underneath you guys. Okay. Um, and I know from there you get a good sight line. That's, that's why I was asking just because – and even too with the pot with podcasts with the game feed. Obviously, there's a game feed in-house, so in-house replay. But even before CBS had the replay of the face mask, you could hear the disgruntled fans basically yeah. moaning and booing over it to where and look, one other problem I had yesterday, and I still have this with the NFL in general, is when a pass interference call happens and the player goes like this, and then out of nowhere. Yeah, right. Using rally pals for props. When that happens, that is something that bothers me league wide. Mm-hmm. I feel like these referees either have to make the call in the moment, mm-hmm. or like yesterday, it was a bad call. You put the flag away. But there's yeah. just it's to the point where you can't let the player like a player's like t- calling for a flag, even though I'll do it from home. That's because I'm a fan. I don't get paid jack to do <laughs> watch these games. I get to do it because I'm a sicko and I love it. You, on the other hand, you're a sickle, but you get paid for it, which I hope to be one day. But that's neither here nor there. But it's just you want to see the – you don't want to see the integrity of the game being questioned, and stuff like that makes it happen, especially, too, when you have a team like Houston whose aspirations are up here. Yeah. And you have New England whose are down here. And for everyone saying, oh, what's that? And I know I was dogging on Houston for not having a signature win, but at the end of the day, they're going to be playing football the second week of Jan- the second or third week of January. New England, think- January 5th, yeah. they'll be in Cancun. <laughs> And I think it was actually uh, on that topic. It um, there was one play too where it looked like it could have been a potential like you know late hit on Drake Mayon. Like it looked like he had already stepped out of bounds, and they kind of shoved him. You know, a, a Houston defender came over and pushed him farther, so he fell down. And one, uh, one of the reporters actually tweeted out, "If that was Patrick Mahomes, would that have been a call?" And it's it's. it's it's super interesting because it's like I know that was a joke, and I mean it made me laugh and smile a little bit. Because, but it's like okay, but also like probably, yeah. You know, and you yeah. don't want to say that, but it's hard. So, just on that topic, it's I, I can see where it can get frustrating, especially for the fans who were there yesterday who wanted to just like who were looking for hope and for promise. Um, those moments can take away from a game. Yeah, that that's that's the exact thing I wanted to point to is the fact that. Like why I use the wet blanket metaphor yeah, is the fact that you have a debut, three touchdowns. Drake may look great. The fact that, too, he was also able to make 
something out of nothing under pressure. And also, too, great job for him holding the football in the one where he's like that. But you have that, but it's ruined. And where, excuse me, a lot of their games coming up, too, like they have, they're playing the Jets in a couple weeks at home. Then they yes. play the Bears. They have the Dolphins. They have, these are all games I believe you're going to. Um, and then the Bills and the Chargers towards the end of the year to where I don't want to see it be dictated, be just let, let officiating dictate how the game goes. It's like you, you, I know there's a couple with Patrick Mahomes and stuff like that, but at the same time too, it's just the Cincinnati ones that are pointed to, but I look at that and I'm like, okay, but Cincinnati also shouldn't know, should know not to make certain plays. Um, to the comment of the Drake may going out of bounds one. I want to say this. I feel like if once he's a veteran and he gets his feet a little more wet, he's going to know, Hey, I move my body a certain other way to where I tumble a little more. Then you get the unnecessary roughness call because we remember that that won them a game in 2020 with Cam Newton against Arizona. That's true. Oh my gosh. I forgot about that. That's so true. A lot of that season's ingrained into my memory in a very bad way, but yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of like weird moments from that season. That's just ingrained into my head to where I'm just like, yep, that happened. Move past it. I always thought 2020 was a bad season, but no, 2020. I'll still say this. Even though they are they are 1-5 right now, they were 1-5 last year, what we saw yesterday makes me a lot more positive to where when so, – so say, for example, like I know we missed the monthly review for the month of September. Pat Lane stepped in, which was him and I had a great – it was just very needed conversation. But whenever the three of us talk again at the end of the season when, – when we talk well, – also when we talk at the end of the season and we think about what's going into the off season. There's going to be that sense of, you know what, hey, it's not that we're ready to go, but now is like that, hey, we can take the next leap. Kind of like what Detroit did two years ago. You have another high draft pick, you get the best player available, and you just keep moving forward to then where 2026 comes around. And that offseason, we are all banging the drum saying, guys, it is time to go. It is time to go to work. It's time to, you know, where um, – I was gonna say, I was gonna jokingly gonna say, you know, they're because I know it's New Orleans, San Francisco, LA. It's like, hey, we're going to LA, but in reality, I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, the only other thing I want to say to fans quickly, I think you because I know too that I know myself on Twitter, you see during games, but you also see someone else on Twitter who gives you quite the chuckle during games. And he pointed something out on Twitter that is McGarvin again, by the way. We miss you, buddy. Hope you're doing good with your kids. But he basically said that for right now, you're gonna cheer for wins, or in your case, you're gonna hope they win. Losses are going to come, and we'll worry about draft position come January. Yep. That's what, that's my view. That's been my view. And I 100% agree. Listen, you know, I think last year what was so hard and why, like, the, you know, oh, just lose the game, get us the draft pick came along was, like, there was nothing steady about the offense, you know. When you're having this Mac Jones starts, no, now it's Bailey Zappi, but now Bailey Zappi's getting booed off the field and all this stuff. You know, it's – there was nothing really – because when you look at it, you know, like for us, there's so much more to a game. But for yeah. a lot of guys, it all starts with – I mean, it does. It all starts with the quarterback and goes down from there. Because the quarterback can make or break a game for you. That's just the truth of it. And last season when there was no quarterback to really root for, um, just with all the struggles, that's when, you know, by October you're looking at draft position saying, ooh, yay, <laughs> look, this. Yeah. Um, I think right now – you know, the Patriots have the first overall draft pick. And again, I can't speak for all the fans, but at least for myself, I'm hoping they go out there and they move down a bit, to be honest with you. Not a lot. I think they'll still be pretty high on that list. But I do think that, like, you know, going out there to see in like a game like Jacksonville or in these games that you can look at as like, okay, this could be a winnable game. I mean, did anyone go into this Texans game really thinking that, you know, the number three defense in the world in the uh, league was going to, you know, was going to not no match for a rookie quarterback in his first ever NFL start with an offensive line that was on its sixth different combination. Nope. Nope. I, 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 for one, went into that game knowing we're probably going to lose. I just would have liked it if the score was a little bit closer. I always, cause I, I had the Patriots in a backdoor cover. I had it like, you know, they lose, but they go with their head held high. They still yeah. go with their head held high, but there still is a lot of work to be done. Um, I've seen a lot of people on Twitter saying that they miss Steve Belichick and look, it's been a little rough with Demarcus Covington and adjusting to DC, but but it's his first time doing the job. This is the first year of a true rebuild. I feel like a lot of Pats fans still have to understand that. That look, the last four. I, also, I just want to just jump in real quick if you don't mind, because with the Demarcus Covington thing, I don't think a lot of the slack should be going on him because I think he's doing what 
he has to do with the parts given. Don't forget, a lot of these top guys are out injured or are banged up and they're still coming back into play, but maybe they're not 110%. Um, but he's doing very well with what he was given. And don't forget the entire – they drafted one defensive player. One defensive player was drafted. Yeah. Um, the the no, most notable signing I can really think about on the outside was Jalen Hawkins for safety. Um, correct me if there's anyone else I'm just glancing over. But, you know, in terms of, like, outside guys, the focus was the offense. The entire focus of the offseason was the offense. There was really no one looking at the defense thinking, like, okay, what can we do to even make ourselves better than we were last year? It was no not really looking at that. So, in terms of that, I don't think that falls on Demarcus Covington. I think once again, you're in a rebuild year. You're dealing with some injuries, and you're doing what you can with what's given. Hopefully, this will shine some light on. Okay, it's not just the offense that needs some work. I mean, you've gotten your quarterback situation figured out. Your receivers are starting to pick up where they need to be. Running back. Once you get Ramondre back, that's a huge get. Antonio Gibson's look solid. The line needs some help. Everyone's focused on the offensive line. Okay, let's also look at the defense a little bit and say. How can we make ourselves even better? Because that was what was kind of missing this offseason. So I'm going to say this right now. It wasn't me going into DeMarcus Covington. And no, I, and I knew that. that. I just wanted to. <laughs> it's like earlier this year, too, with you, how you said, you know what? If you want receipts on CBs, go see Sophie because she spoke to Mike Pellegrino. Um, no, the thing I was going to say is, to people have to remember, like you said, there's been injuries. There's been rests. There's yeah. been – for the second straight year, this team has been decimated with injuries. Last year it was Judon and Gonzalez. This year it's been – it's been Peppers and Bentley that are gone and Barmore to where Duggar people are – out a few games. Yeah. There's Duggar, Duggar, Duggar not game. playing. You out on the other side, they're saying Ramondre not playing. It's And I know that's AVP. And I, I, I still have some problems with AVP, but I've been seeing a lot of people tweeting out saying, oh, Brian Dayball, OC next year. I'm going to say this right now. If they go out to – if it doesn't work out. They fire AVP just because they're a bad team. I don't agree with that as of now because you can't just do that. Like we say, we're not a dysfunctional organization, and there's still the whole thing of – I know there are certain reporters that are being criticized for, you know, not defending the team but almost protecting some of the identity stuff when there's valid criticisms coming in. Um, but you have to remember, like I said, this is true year one of a rebuild. It's a new head coach. It is a new person managing the team. It is a new offensive, defensive, special teams coordinators. Rome was not built in a day. Remember, <laughs> the Lions are still running with the same staff that they had when they first started. I know there's been some changes here and there, but Aaron Glenn and Dan Campbell have always been – they've been the constants that have been there to where one day if, you know what, DeMarcus Covington gets poached for a head coaching job or AVP leaves because someone wants to take a chance on him as a head coach, those are problems you want to have in the NFL. Well, it was the same thing with like when Matt Patricia and Josh McDaniels were getting calls every single year mm -hmm. to get interviewed for those positions. It was like, you know, you have that, oh my God, no, I don't want them. Which is so funny to say now, especially with um, yeah. considering what their history with the head coaching gig. But it was like you were watching that saying, oh my God, no, don't go. Like we don't want them to go because this coaching staff is so good. Those are those are things you want. You don't want a coaching staff like let's say the Jets right now who have a top – quarterback and had to fire their head coach like that's not the situation you want to be in um as for Alex Van Pelt I do think that there is some criticism to be had um I think he was a little too conservative uh to start the game with Drake you have a quarterback who can run the ball out of the pocket who can throw some bombs a 40-yard bomb to Kayshawn Booty if you watch that replay he could not have put that ball I mean that was like and I'm like I'm careful with making this um comparison but it was just that was like a Tom Brady, like perfectly placed in his hands on the run ball. And yeah. like just watching that, I mean, Keyshawn Booty was on, didn't have to, I didn't look like he really had to slow down. He just put his hands out. The ball came to him and he ran into the end zone. Like that was that play. Um, so this is the kind of plays you can get out of a guy like that. Um, and all I can think of is the, uh, the entire crowd, Drake May's first two plays, they went three and out the first offensive drive. And the first two plays were run plays that got yeah. him what, a yard or two yards, the entire crowd at Gillette Stadium booed. I mean, the boos were very loud, and they were not for Drake. I will say that. Every time Drake took the field, it was excitement. The boos were because you have a top three quarterback who is known for his arm strength, and you're running the ball on, the, on his first two plays of the game. One other point I want to make with Drake, I know everyone was saying, oh, it's not the right time to play him. This is this. 
there's not a right time to play anyone. You do nope. it. I think more than the offensive line play, it was the way they lost a very winnable game against Miami. Because this year, out of their six games, two, three games, the one they won, and there was the two other games that were winnable. Seattle, which, look, I as soon as the DPI penalty happened, I knew the game was over. And then last week. But the fact that he lost the game last week the way they did, yeah. you can't basically go back and say, yeah, we're going to run Jacoby back again and play him against this stout team when he was taking hit after hit in the pocket against the Miami defense this year that, you know what, has not looked very good, especially against teams like Tennessee. So you have to remember, like I said, Rome was not built in a day. Foxborough will rise again. Yes. You just have to give it time. I know myself. Look. It's kind. Of, I want to say this with like with Boston teams. Right, it was not really on one rebuilding. There's one that's a championship defending champions. There's one that look should probably make the playoffs. There's one that has incompetent ownership, which thank God New England the Patriots don't have. And then there's the Patriots. I know a lot of people are kind of after this whole thing. Like we talk about this too a lot. The whole Jonathan Kraft stuff, where it's just like, oh, you know, he's going to get the team and just run it into the ground. Where look. You can't control the future. You don't know what's going to happen. For now, Robert Kraft's still kicking. Robert Kraft's going to be the owner of this team. And, and also, Jonathan now... Kraft works with his father, like, very closely. I yeah. also think that's worth pointing out. It's like, obviously, we can't tell the future, but I'm not sure I'm on the train of, like, he's going to run it into the ground immediately. Like, I no, he's just fans his, dad, on that. his dad's ownership won six Super Bowls during, you know, yep. for that team during a time. I don't think that he's really looking to change much in terms of that stance, in my opinion. Which led to a documentary series that, look, had us podcast very much together with you in different locations, whether it being your bedroom, whether it being your your bedroom at your parents' house. I can say that now because you're on your own. Am, um, yes. Your bedroom at your parents' house with your dog in your lap, and now with your beautiful <laughs> boss. I don't know where in Boston you are. I'm not gonna. We're not gonna. I'm not gonna do a Sam Mitchell on you and say that information on air. Um, <laughs> But you know, so where I'm like, I'm not concerned about that. I just, I just see it on Twitter, so I feel the need to say something to you. You know, you got, feel the need to be like, hey, this is what's going on. Yeah. Um, a couple more things we have before we get out of here. I want to shift gears off the Patriots for a second because you know earlier we were talking about just Patriot players or teams that have people in the team that impressed you. So I have two questions for you. One, who's that NFL team right now that like you're kind of like you can see going into January or like a team that like has kind of like surprised you, Miss Weller, in a sense. And the other one is too. Um, since you have a connection to a certain NFL community, what can you say to that fan base about the way that their player, favorite player is playing? Um, the first one, that's tough. Um, but – I got to okay, I'm going to do the second the second question first cuz I got to think about that one cuz I have like cool. a few bouncing around in my head that I want to make sure I pick the right one. Um as for, you know, the Travis Kelsey slow start once again, he's when 35. People, when he it's not even that, he's not playing like he's 35. When people look at how a play a certain player is doing for a season, they look at stats. Football is so much more than stats. Once again, remember that play we were talking about that play with Marte Mapu earlier yeah. that caused that because Marcus Jones is going to get all the credit for that interception on the stat sheet. But we, you know, watching that game, we we know who was just as much a part of it. So it, it's things like that where he's block, he's blocking. I mean, he's a big, big body. He's blocking for them, and he's allowing the run game to get going. Um, and then he starts to do his thing. Listen, you know, you have that word like Mr. January. I think it can go for both Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Because Travis also, when the playoffs come, he's someone that Mahomes can rely on. And it doesn't mean he has to go to him all the time. I mean, it was great to see Juju step up. I mean, no ill will there. It was awesome to see him having a good game and doing what he could with a new team. But it's ha things like that where Patrick Mahomes has these other guys he can go to. And that allows Travis to block and make these major plays in the field where the camera's not showing it. But when they go back and watch the film, hey, look at that. You know, every other tight end's like, did you see that block Travis did? Holy crap. Um, so just remember, f in terms of that community, football's a lot more than the stats. Um, unfortunately, it does not look like Taylor will be at the next two games either because her errors tour resumes. And based on the locations and the dates, would not be possible. I think it's um, Miami. 
yeah, she's well, she's in. Uh, she starts in Miami. There's they, there were videos posted today of them setting up the stage at the Hard Rock Stadium. Um, not that I you know know or anything. Um, no, um, always following that very closely. Um, so yeah, that was that's what I would say there. As for a team that has that I think come January could make a run. Let me. Oh, do you have one? Um, you first. So I want to answer your question. I'm going to answer my part on the Kelsey one first. I only say the 35 thing because I was always a proponent of for fantasy football. Don't take them. Don't touch them yeah. because of that. And also too because. He got a contract this offseason that's not very well seen in the NFL. Instead mm -hmm. of a, hey, we're going to pay you because we expect you to do this, from Brett Veach and Clark Hunt, he got a thank you for your service and championships contract where, look, it basically – I don't know if it guarantees him the next two years, but it guarantees him this year, and then there's an option for next year to where if he – look, at this point, I think it's either he walks away at the end of this season or he walks after next season. I think that's yeah. what's going to happen with him. Um, but no, with the way I, so I'm also going to say this too about Juju that's going from riding the orange line on the T to driving yeah. a Ferrari. Okay. People. Yes. That's, yes. A, that's a Boston joke that only certain people, including so yes. hopefully so. And I know Sophie's getting, um, <laughs> cause I know some people were saying like, Oh, Juju, New England could use Juju right now. And I'm like he, with Jacoby. No, it's not what's going to happen. It's basically, like I said, you go from the orange line to a Ferrari wonders happen. Um, no. And I've always said the Mr. January thing. Cause look, if he goes out there and balls in January and has two or 300 yard games, that's what people are going to remember. And as for Patrick Holmes right now, they're five and oh, so his stats don't matter if he, cause I know his EPA per play stats are really bad right now. They're a two and four football team. Yeah. The you sound the alarm bells. They're five and oh, for a re they're, they're five and oh, they're a defensive football team. So you don't worry about that. Um, for my January one, I'm going Detroit. I'm there. Yeah. I, I said, this I, last that was night. one on my list, but I was trying to pick one. That's like a little bit less, like, you know, but there is another team in their division that I got laughed at for from some family members when I said to them, including a Green Bay Packer fan, this team could surprise some people, and that was the Vikings. I yes. said they have the coaching, they have this stuff to where for the first time since realignment happened when you were, I think, one years old. This was 2002. <laughs> now I know that Sophie's born in 01 and also – one. So she was born in 2001. Realignment happened in 2002. On a frightful day in February, she sat on a remote during the Super Bowl. Um, and then, so, <laughs> like, so basically, the, for the first time since realignment occurred, all four teams in a division by week six have won at least four games. So that's just something cool to point out as well. But, yeah, no, my team from the NFC is Minnesota. From the AFC, I'm also, I honestly don't know from the AFC. I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to – there's just so much weird unknown, but the easy answer is Baltimore. But my fun answer is going to be Buffalo because I still have the winning the division. Oh, I still yeah. think 17 is the best that he's been. And as for the Eras Tour remarks, I just believe – I know she's going to – I think it's – apart from Miami, I think it's Indy and New Orleans before she comes to my neck of the woods. Mm-hmm which I don't have tickets. I don't have tickets. Those things are like Willy Wonka's golden ticket to find. I don't know why they're so hard. Um, I know people – I actually heard a story today from a friend of uh, my cousin who – he plays men's league hockey with a guy. Him and his wife – him and his partner got tickets. I think it was like 180 each, and they sold them, and they got six grand. Yeah, it's, a, it's insane how much you can sell these tickets for. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's how that goes. So that's the only thing I wanted to add to that. It's just the whole – Taylor Swift portion yeah. of it as well. Um, um, I'll go with mine. So NFC, I'm going to go Atlanta. I'm really impressed with how Atlanta has looked, even in that game against the Chiefs. Um, you know, always got to root for Judon. But just in general, I like the way I think Kirk looks. You know, he's looking okay. He's got the receivers. I don't know. I'm not – they're four and two. I'm not sleeping on Atlanta just yet. Um, I'm. They're a team I have my eye on from the AFC – um, Sam is going to kill me. I do like the Steelers because I think Justin Fields has been pretty yeah. decent. Yeah, he just yelled. Um, I think that I, I do like how Justin Fields has been, um, especially considering like this whole like Russell Wilson's our starting quarterback and then he hasn't played now for six, you know, all that. And I was always a fan of Justin Fields. Um, I always kind of root for him there. Uh, Baltimore again is one I think come January. He just goes, yes. Tell him it's the easier answer. So that's why you say Pittsburgh. <laughs> Uh, come January, I do think that, you know, that's going to be a team. I don't see how they're not in the playoffs. Uh, and then, yes, the Bills. Um, Josh Allen is Josh Allen. 
<laughs> and they're rolling right now. They're 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 playing, and, and I love this at this Jets game that these are throwback uniforms. But I literally grew up watching them play these. Like, am I old? Or are they just like trying to bring in new stuff there? Um, also, too, with I know when you make your comments about Baltimore, there's also some really weird things that have come out there with fans. Yesterday, I don't know if you saw that video online of the. I'll send it to you later. Uh, basically, this guy went up to people and started picking fights with people in commanders jerseys. I don't know why, but essentially, he's getting called out online for it now. And people found out where he works, and they're basically yeah. tagging his work in it to try to get him canned because, like, look what you did. That's you don't. We don't condone. I anyway. I had a whole spiel with Pat about f- fans fighting. I don't stand for it, but. Yeah, the weird thing with the NFL right now, there's not a team like I know Kansas City's the team where they're five and zero, they're poised to three peat, but there's not a team right now that I can confidently look at and say they're going to hoist the Lombardi come February. There's teams that look come January, I think, can make noise, but there's no one team right now where I'm like, yeah, they're the team that I believe in. I Talk have one team right now, but of yeah. course that's just because I it's to me it gives its flashes of Tom Brady in the postseason where you can never bet against him, and that's of course the Chiefs is like. Yeah you know, all the comparisons of Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady, like it's, it was the same thing. They were not the best football team last year. That much was clear. And yet look who hosted the Lombardi trophy come February. That was, so that's just the one for me right now, based on a five and O start that just is like, okay. It's like all, everything is just working out so well for that to happen. But no, I'm with you in terms of just like overall, I don't think there's one team, you know, I can sit here and be like, they're so, so dominant that no one stands a chance. I have another two-part question for you. One, are you wearing a Celtics championship apparel right now? Mm-hmm. Um, and two, so when you say Sam's in the pit, like when he's there, like is he just like quietly sitting in the other room waiting for you to be finished? Or is he like off the distance and heard you say stuff about Pittsburgh and went, hey. Come here. Bring uh, it over. Okay. Bring it over. This is currently what he was. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's actually no. the Baltimore jersey I prefer, by the way, to then the purple. Yeah. I like the black is that one. one. I got you, or is that the? No, that's the other one. Mm. Oh, he has another one. Hold on, I think he's okay. getting it. Okay. He's very okay. excited right now. Ooh. This is like well, kid in a candy store right now. Let <laughs> me get some credit for this one. Which one? Oh Let's yeah, see. look at this one. I forgot he has this one. You got it. You got it. You. You, you should wear that more. I kind of forgot you have that one. And then he has a Justin Tucker one that I got him. Yeah, like you have a Hall of Fame kicker, you have a MVP level quarterback, and you have a Colts legend all in one uniform closet. Colts legend. That, hey, no. I think you got a little hurt there. <laughs> no, but so when we do these, so I will say, so we, we live in Boston. We're in a one bedroom apartment in Boston. So he's in the other room watching football, and we're packing for London right now because we leave on Wednesday night for the game. Um, and he's going to come with me because London's like his dream trip. Um, yes. so we're, so he's currently packing. He's walking the You're going shopping. You, you said this before. Mm-hmm. Well, actually we did. So he messed up the dates. So the original plan was going to be that, but, um, the game he's going to, he, he's a diehard Chelsea fan. He'll be going to that game on Saturday, uh, Sunday. Oh. Sorry. Same day as the Patriots games. Okay. So, so, so he won't be going to the Pats game, but he'll be going to, I will be at that game. Don't worry. You know, got it. Got it. And you, she, and Sophie leaves Wednesday and she'll have all the stuff from there. Do you know when the before we go? Do you know when the team's going? Yes, the team leaves Thursday. Okay, so they're going to practice here Wednesday. They're going to practice Thursday. They're going to go Thursday. Then it's just a quick like. And then we will have, and then I will have live updates from London from their practice on Friday. She never stops working. She's going on vacation, but she doesn't (laughs) stop working. No such thing. There's no such thing. And then will you be back for the Jets game? Yes, I come back that following Wednesday. So you're going right to practice with no sleep. Oh, like we literally planned our flight home because it was, you know, we wanted to make it a trip and all that. So we're like, instead of coming back like on a red eye Tuesday night, because we did consider it the also pricing and everything was best Wednesday morning. Sam would have like been like, oh, let's stay the day and then go home at night. And that way we could fly. I was like, no, because this gets us back and I could possibly make it in time for practice. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, as long as the flight's not delayed, I have a chance. The grind doesn't stop, and Miss Weller's gonna be here again next time. Next time we do this, we're gonna get, we're gonna have the three of us. That's the plan I want to make right now. It has to be the three of us. McGarvin, he, I'll, I'll come babysit for him so he can be on. Yeah, <laughs> we'll go. We'll all go over and babysit for him. Yeah, I'll fly. I'll fly in. I'll fly in. Um, <laughs> I'll fly in. You do there, and then we'll all just like gather in that like computer room of his, and we'll podcast from there. <laughs> 
But anyway, best of the both of you guys on your flight to London, guys. Follow her all week long for updates from London for all Pats fans out there. For also, just Griff, for fun things. I, there, I can't. I cannot promise I won't have at least one Taylor Swift reference. I'm for anyone who's not, you know, there. I'm so sorry, but it's gonna happen. I. It's why I do it when you come on, you know. I, I I'm, the, the, I'm gonna post a photo when I leave saying so long, London. Like it's gonna happen. We already know it. And I don't know what to call this show, but I feel like it's just, you know what, it's the May referendum, basically. You know, it's like <laughs> I'll come up with a fun May pun. I did May Day last time for Thursday May because the it was announced. You guys drinking from my Star Wars mug. <laughs> she got it. She got it. That's it. 56, 56, 47. <laughs> that is it. She got it. made a fourth. Made a fourth be with you because you know what? When you're playing the 32nd ranked team for a DVOA on defense, the force is going to be with you. I'm going to be waking up on Sunday morning to watch it. Then I get red zone for the entire day. I'm excited for that. I'll be back Thursday night, folks, to get you ready with week seven. With I'm not going to say anything right now, but it's a very, very OG guest from way back in the day, a close personal oh, yeah. friend of mine. But anyway, guys, for Sophie with two Weller with two E's and two R's because one E and one R was taken. I'm Griff. Guys, have a good night. Best